And um, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name's Edwin. I'm a youth talent advisor at, here at Douglas County. I'm fairly new. I'm only, uh, I'd say, uh, I started in October, but I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Um, just being able to, you know, uh, impact students' li you know, lives and just allowing them to explore different careers and opportunities that are out here in, in Douglas County and especially, you know, out in Coos Bay or where you guys are at. And um, yeah, I'm having fun. So today we're going to talk about social media and networking, um, you know, both, uh, you know, discussions go hand in hand. And uh, now, you know, we live in a world where social media has a huge influence in our daily lives. And so we, we have this presentation for you guys. So we can start. Uh, it doesn't allow me to, oh, okay. Okay, so let's have a, a, a conversation about social media. Um, do you guys know um, what online networking means? You know, what does that look like for you? If anyone wants to um, share their, you know, idea of online networking, um, you know, you can comment in the comment section or, you know, if you're willing to um, speak out, you know, you can do that as well. And we'll give you guys time to, to type in. I know most of us are typing. Um, really just, again, the question is, what is your, what do you think online networking is? So we've got one response here of working online. And who was that, uh, Tina or? Uh, Teresa. Teresa. Good. Yeah, and, and, you, and you're, it, that's sort of a small portion of what online networking is. You know, it is working online However, you know, there's sort of a bigger picture with your, you know, online networking, you know, it's, it's connecting with people, you know, that are in the same interest as you and the same profession. Um, and then, you know, it starts off with your virtual presence. You know, we're also, we'll, we'll talk about that as well um, throughout the slide and throughout the presentation, um, which is, critical, you know, in this day and age um, with networking and, you know, um, be, being able to um, um, make those professional connections in the workplace and, you know, online. Um, so online networking, you know, you're using social media correctly to help build a network of connections. Like I said before, you know, it's, it's, you know, building those, those relationships, those, you know, professional relationships to sort of um, propel you to uh, get into the workforce or being able to um, move up uh, in the, in the sort of uh, uh, social ladder. And, and, you know, these connections will help you with your job search and future career path. Um, and, you know, and, and it, it, it takes time, you know, it takes time to understand this, this concept and, you know, it, like you said, you know, social media can be a powerful tool with, you know, with making those connections and, you know, allowing us to sort of, you know, um, I guess, uh, uh, to continue, uh, um, Get, get to that place we want in life. Um, so uh, you can notice um, that in, in social networking, you have uh, sort of industry related articles and posts. Um, you can participate in group discussions when you online networking, um, explore platforms that are built just for professionals um, like LinkedIn, Indeed, um, 
and and let's go back and in and how how many of you use indeed and linkedin and um you know facebook to to sort of um connect with people So one person saying yes, they know, or they do use it. And you know, another way um, really to think of networking, because there's a lot of a lot of words that that have multiple meanings, right? And networking is, you know, you think of even in an office setting or in your house, um, you always have that thing. Do you want to join a network or do you want to be linked in and have your computer discover another network? It's really, it's like a net, really. You know, it's a web that's of of casting, casting a net out. To people that are around you and when we're in this virtual world like we are right now um we we do want to express the idea of online networking as an option um networking in itself usually would be you going physically into a school or into an office and really just meeting people right and so we're, we're looking at online networking as a way um to continue meeting people building those relationships and forming connections um and what we're going to focus today on is the way that our social media accounts actually help us do that and they can also hinder us from doing that mm -hmm. and and then you know it's also it's our virtual presence and you know our next slide it shows us you know it's unavoidable you know the internet's everywhere um especially uh with this pandemic it just you know, technology has accelerated um, the way we change, you know, the, the way, uh, you know, the job market um, and jobs that are out there um, be, being more virtual and using um, these social platforms. It, um, so, you know, it's, it's, we have to embrace it because it's going to be here and there's no, there's no way to, there's no turning back. And, and I also, it, it gives you a competitive competitive edge in job in the job market, you know, re remembering that job application begins as soon as you submit your information. Um, and they're not limited to details on paper. So, you know, employers see your virtual presence and they they have access to any information you put out in the web, you know, and, and it says two out of five employers pre screen using social media. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, you know, that's, it's gonna be more frequent, you know, a lot of these companies will start to um, search you on, on the web and, and, and see, you know, what kind of presence you have in the virtual world, um, which what, what will reflect who you are as a person. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it says here, you know, 65% checking for professional presentation, 50% checking to see if personality fits with the company's culture, and 47% will not call an applicant with no online presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, and some people, there are some people out there with, you know, no social media, you know, they are, you know, either anti-social media or, you know, they find that, you know, um, life can get overwhelming, you know, in the social media world. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, it makes it harder for, for those um, to uh, sort of, uh, you know, gain, gain employment because it, we need, well, you know, people use social media now more than ever, especially companies to sort of um, uh, find out who you are as a person and, and like like this uh, this post says, you know, if your personality fits with the company's culture, you know, mm -hmm. that's very very huge and important to understand this concept of a mm -hmm. virtual presence. Uh, so, here's a question for you guys: What what do you think are the top uh, three? Um, platforms where employers look at do you guys have you know, some ideas it could be any any platforms um social platform <clears throat> while they're typing in their answers i just i've noticed a trend lately um with the virtual environment that our businesses you know we're in rural oregon 
counties. Um, we're not in big, big counties where we're trying to get our first job at a very large corporation and competing with college. Um, we are, um, you know, going down to the corner store and seeing if we can get a job there. Um, and yet with the pandemic and with the virtual environment, more and more businesses have had to go virtual. And so they have had to develop those skills and those abilities. So as someone who may have only used their email or, or um, you know, maybe a trip check map app on their phone, now they know how to get into Google and to search names and to go on to Facebook and search your name and, and try to find out a little bit more about you. So it is becoming more and more um, apparent in our, in our local communities too, that the younger that we are, the more likely we are to have a social media presence. And also now it's becoming more apparent that employers are, are checking them. So I know there are, um, the next slides are gonna show us what a survey that they did told us the top in, the top um, social media channels are that employers um, check. And so we do have a guest from Teresa. She's saying Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, question mark. Mm. Uh, and that uh, might be correct. It, yeah, it I might be, correct. let's see. So we have here, Oh, Got close. It. So yeah, we, we, do, we do, I mean, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are the top three platforms that employers do check. Um, and I'm not too sure if you guys are familiar, you know, you, you would say, you know, Twitter, you know, do they, you know, is Twitter really, I mean, people use Twitter um, and <laughs> it's, and, you know, you get a lot of, you um, Twitter can get opinionated with, you know, people's beliefs. And sometimes, you know, you have to be careful of what you put out there. Uh, and especially on Facebook um, and, and LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is more geared towards business and professionals networking rather than, you know, the social aspect of networking. Um, so LinkedIn is a, a powerful tool um, mm -hmm. for professionals in the <clears throat> workplace. Um, and then you have other um, social media channels such as Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, you know, alternative, indeed, you know, those, those are powerful platforms that we, you know, you can utilize um, to make those professional connections, you know, um, it's, and it's trending too, you know, TikTok, it, you know, people are TikTok famous and, you know, they, they have this global audi audience and, you know, they, they make money, you know, using, utilizing these platforms. Um, I mean, it's funny, TikTok came out of nowhere. I mean, because Vine was, used to be, you know, sort of what TikTok is now, um, but, you know, it, it's ever changing. You know, the scope of social media is, it, it's, it's changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. It is, and just to throw in um, some of my own personal experience again with interviewing uh, candidates locally, um, I do not, I don't follow Twitter. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a personal Twitter user, but I do um, put people's names into Google and I see what comes up, and then I open up Twitter, and I open up Facebook, and I open up LinkedIn. Um, I I have now developed a TikTok account, um, and that's because I have some little little children in my life who love making funny face videos. Um, so I also have been able to search TikTok. Um, and Instagram, and really, um, we'll go more into what each of these platforms are. But that's what we're looking for. We're we're looking to see if if this is something that you're posting um, non-professional looking pictures and things that might be illegal, or things that might just you know have to deal with bullying mm -hmm. or inappropriateness. And so um, it really is stuff that we look for. Um, I'm definitely more interested in seeing what a candidate has put on their LinkedIn account than any others. And so I have had a couple where I stopped at LinkedIn and not even gotten into trying to find out more about them personally. I wanna know about them professionally first off. And so as we um, get you students closer to graduation and closer to moving into your adult lives, um, we definitely encourage you to work on setting up a LinkedIn profile. And we'll, we'll look into that further in a couple of slides. Um, but really, um, it's true, it's out there. We're not just you know randomly suggesting things to, to set up. So yeah, let's learn a little bit more about LinkedIn. Yeah, so so LinkedIn, like I said, it's it's more of a of a, a business model. You know, um, you, you do um, it's specifically caters to the business community, 
and you know the professional um, uh, workforce. You know, it allows registered members to establish documents and networks of people they know and trust professionally. Um, they have over 29 million students and recent college graduates on LinkedIn. And, you know, LinkedIn is the fast, fastest growing demographic. And, you know, profile pages emphasize employment history and education. So, you know, you, you set up a profile just like any um, uh, social media platform and you know you, you got to be mindful of what you you know put in that profile and you know it, you can share your interests and then LinkedIn will match those interests and connect you with you know like-minded people that share those same interests you know making it easier for you to connect with you know professionals it seems, seems like we had something on in the chat room Yes, we do. Uh, Lisa was asking if high school students can use LinkedIn. And I was just going to check real quick to make sure there's not an age restriction. Um, but I know I've worked with seniors um, setting up some profiles there. So I know that they can use it. Um, I'm just wondering if they have a, um, a minimum age requirement. So I will look, I will look for that. <laughs> Uh, she said, as soon as they turn 18, maybe, and possibly, yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's restrictions to any social media uh, platform or network game platform. And actually, I just I just found it on LinkedIn. They're saying their minimum age is actually 16. Oh, wow. 16-year-old, um, we can set you up. Um, now, it's not necessarily available for you then to use for job searches or for applications at that age. Um, there is some parental consent that goes along with personal data releases, um, but for setting up a basic profile, you can be 16. Nice. So other um, social media channels that you can utilize um, is Indeed. Indeed is, oops, Indeed is a huge you know, online job site with over 250 million visitors, you know, I don't know how many of you use Indeed. Um, I know it's, uh, I've, I've used it in my professional career, you know, after graduating um, college. Um, so it's, it's helped me. I, actually, I think I, I, I applied for this position through Indeed, um, funny enough. So, you know, it's, it's, it works, it works. And, you know, it's similar to uh, LinkedIn, where you create a profile, and you know you you also can um, you you can upload your resume, and you can take um, skill assessment tests to sort of uh, narrow down you know your job search, and and they'll even email you um, every uh, week or so on sort of new job listings or openings that match your interests. And, and, you know, it's indeed is more than just, you know, a job seeking uh, a platform, you know, you can, they have research on, you know, interview skills and, you know, just soft skills in general. And they have really good, great articles on, uh, you know, professionalism and, and um, just gu guidance in, in career exploration. It looks like we have a, another, and that was, um, that was me, Edwin, typing back. Um, Lisa had mentioned that she'd never used LinkedIn. And so I was just letting people know um, that LinkedIn is becoming more and more common in our area. Um, I'm able to um, connect and network with people, um, really people that have worked with the bigger companies and the college has some professors on it. You know, really, um, people that have moved from out of the area into the area uh, may have set one up already. But we are currently considered Eugene and the surrounding areas still. Uh, we don't have a network that's just for Coos County. Um, and flowing into that onto Indeed, I know Indeed has a huge presence with our local employers and they are definitely posting on Indeed. So when we go on further later in the month, we're gonna talk about online job applications. Indeed is a great place to look. Um, our local employment offices and our work source organ um, offices actually dual post with the um, Oregon Employment Department as, and then also onto Indeed because um, it is something that our, our local areas use, our 
our job seekers use. And like Edwin said, it's actually a little, um, it's a social media site in itself. Mm -hmm. You do get the, um, the ability to house your own profile, your own resume, um, and then connect with businesses that way. And just to reiterate, Indeed is a great place to look when you are preparing for an interview and you're needing to find out more about a company because they do have that spot on there where different users or, or previous employees post reviews um, kind of give you some more information that will serve you better when you're doing your interviews too. Yeah, a great point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a powerful tool and it, you know, it, it continues to grow, you know, as we move towards a more, you know, technological, uh, you know, advanced um, society. So mm -hmm. it's definitely, you know, a useful tool. Um, so the next, um, uh, Facebook, you know, Facebook has, you know, been on the news you know, uh, uh, lately, you know, for good reasons and bad reasons. Um, and it, it, it's just another platform where, you know, you can connect with people. I mean, uh, it's, it's the most used social media site around the world. I mean, and it's you know easy to maintain a professional appearance and build business relationships. Um, and it, it remains important to know and use security set settings correctly. Um, you know, yeah, you you control what you, you know you put out there on your you know Facebook. You know, and, and also you can sort of. Um, uh, uh, limit the people that can see your posts you know you can go private mm -hmm. or, or public and you know those those settings are, are crucial you know if you you want to sort of um uh not share it to the world you know your mm -hmm. your your private life and then you can, you can make yourself unsearchable on both facebook and google and there are certain um we'll talk further about certain um companies who help you um, sort of uh, delete your virtual presence um, uh, on on the on the web and restrict all all of all of your information to friends only. Like like I said, in in those security settings, you can do that. You know, you, for me um, personally, I, I wouldn't want to share the world about you know my life and my personal life. You know, because I mean, frankly, it's none of their business. So, you know, I'm a very um, private person and, I, you know, I just share with, you know, a group, you know, my friends and my family. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's always, you know, be mindful of, of you know, the, these settings that you can control your own, you know, Facebook profile. And again, you know, limit the access of any friends you don't want to see everything, you know, it's just going back to what I was saying about, you know, being able to control your, your Facebook profile and know, knowing, you know, how to do so. And security settings for any website are necessary foolproof. So yeah, I mean, it, it happens that, you know, Facebook um, tends to um, use your pers personal information and then, you know, sell it, they sort of, um, uh, sell it off to companies. And that's why you see like these different ads, you know, well, you get ads on, on certain sites that you visited and, you know, you, you wonder why, you know, that's happening because, you know, they're seeing what you are, are viewing, you know, mm -hmm. on a daily basis and they use that information. Um, and, and that's why you see certain ads. And Twitter, Twitter is, another social media platform, which, you know, has, it's, it's one of the mainstream platforms, I would say, you know, with over 300 million Twitter users worldwide. Um, and I, I don't know if many of you use Twitter. I personally don't use Twitter. Um, I'm not too sure if it's, you know, um, it's, if it's something younger folks utilize. Um, but uh, how, how many of you have, have, a, have a Twitter account? <clears throat> and like I said, I, I do have a Twitter account, but I don't, um, I think it's because I'm more of a visual person that I don't really use it. Um, it is all word based. And, and Teresa Grace, she does not have one. Um, I have one just because it, I think it came set up with my phone or something like that, you know, 
And when I, when I'm trying to follow stuff in the news, I do use it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try to look it up and get different points of views because it's really, it is out there um, for journalists. It's out there for politicians. It's out there, um, for, you know, um, if there's pandemics, um, if there's crises, tsunamis, response, um, that type of stuff going on. It's a great platform that you can use the hashtags to follow certain things. So if you're trying to keep up to date with a certain topic. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm, I'm more of a visual person. And so I'm definitely, I'm not wanting to sit there and read it read everyone's thoughts. Yeah, and, and it could be overwhelming. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, you know, information overload, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it affects your daily life, you know, just constantly, you know, reading people's tweets and just, you know, it, it, it can affect your, your, your health in, in, in negative ways. Um, so, you know, it's definitely, um, you, you should be mindful of, of sort of uh, having a balance of, you know, um, staying connected and, and staying connected in a productive way mm -hmm. um, and using these platforms. Um, but yeah, tw Twitter is, I would say, yeah, we can all agree that Twitter is more of a sort of a news um, uh, informational um, site rather than, you know, um, a business or um, social aspects to it. Um, but, you know, there's alternative social media out there, you know, and so alternative social media can be specific to industry, specific to culture, specific to network. And there are less restrictive and less money driven platforms out there. And when I say money driven platforms, you know, I mean, you know, there was a time where uh, Facebook and YouTube, where you don't see these constant ads every five mm -hmm. seconds, you know, mm -hmm. and the, yeah, it, it, ha it has changed over time, you know, uh, in Facebook and uh, it was for the purpose of connecting families and friends from all over the world, you know, and, and, and that has changed, you know, in, in recent years. You know, it's becoming more um, divided, and people are 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 becoming consumed with you know really sharing, I guess, too much information mm -hmm. on their uh, on these sites, and so there are sort of you know other alternatives. So for Facebook, you have Yobo, and Yobo is is a is a sort of Facebook like um, platform which which they don't they don't track you track your um, information so you know it's more it's less restrictive and you know you you're able to um sort of uh do what you know the platform was meant to do it with by connecting you with friends and family and sharing your um sort of your um your your, your story or your you know your um life uh and then we have uh miwi is another platform that's similar to Facebook. Um, and then you also have Indeed. Indeed is, is not, there's alternatives to Indeed as well. You know, um, Jobcase, ZipRecruiter is probably something mm -hmm. familiar. And, you, you know, those those are other platforms you can utilize as well um, to connect with professionals in the workforce. Um, interesting, uh, I came across this um, uh, other platform called uh, sharp networking. So S H A P R. And it's funny cause it's sort of like a, a Tinder like, um, platform. I don't know if you guys use Tinder, but where you can actually, um, uh, create a profile just like, um, uh, Tinder. Um, and you can either, uh, it, it will give you sort of, um, people that you can match with who have, sort of the same uh, professional interests. Um, so you can either swipe right or left, you know, if you wanna sort of build those professional relationships with them. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I don't know too much about sharp networking, but you know, that's something to look into. Um, and, and also, you know, something, you know, that's alternative to Twitter. Um, you got Reddit, 
Reddit is a is a mm -hmm. big, big. Um, I don't know if many of you know about Reddit. It's a it's a nice platform where people can just share um, similar interests and have a discussion. It's sort of like a blog or forum type thing, and it, it's it's great. Uh, you know, I've I've used it if I have like a question or like you know I'm seeking answers to certain um, you know uh, I guess uh, question or like. Uh, so I, I'll I'll go to Reddit and and just read people's comments and you know it's 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 a fun way to uh, sort of share and 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 find answers to questions that you might have. Um, and then you you know you also uh, in the cultural um, aspects, you know you do have um, other platforms. Not uh, uh, well, you could, you could say they're social platforms. You you know you have uh certain platforms like workaway which you know allows you to sort of um connect with uh, people from you know different areas of the globe where you can actually go volunteer and you know get that sort of um uh, uh sort of that that um foreign culture um mm. and and woof woofing i don't know if you guys heard of woofing um it's the worldwide um, opportunities on organic farm. And it's just another way where you can actually uh, go abroad and you can, you know, work on a farm and, and just learn their culture and you know, learn how different, you know, uh, parts of the globe, you know, uh, use, uh, oh, it, well, uh, sort of how they do farming, you know, because the way we farm here in the States is totally different um, in certain places around the world. So if you're into farming um, or agriculture in general, you know, that'd be a great uh, platform to use. Mm -hmm. And you got tons of it. I mean, it, you know, whatever interests you have, I, I believe that there is a platform, you know, for your interests, you know, <clears throat> even Nanny, Au Pair. Au Pair is a huge platform. If you're into, you know, children and you love, uh, you know, taking care of children and, and being a role model, you know, au pair is, 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 is a huge, huge platform, you know, to get that cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, there's a number of, of um, different platforms, you know, to help you connect with, you know, people um, and, and professionals. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of one that um, I, I joined. I have these animals at home that are, they're a type of amphibian and they're called axolotls. And they're, they're like a, a salamander that never actually turns into a salamander. So they're stuck in this um, neotenic phase where they just are like a big tadpole that walks around. Super cool, love them. Um, and I actually bred them for a while and sold them. And there's a website that's called caudida.org and it's for any type of reptile. So if you have uh, interest in reptiles, uh, you go onto this forum and then you link from that to this type of reptile or type of amphibian. And then you go on and there's blogs, there's informational stuff you can buy and sell. You can, you know, um, just share information with other people. And it's, it's a great network for, you know, amphibians. So um, there's like Edwin was saying, there's, <laughs> there's, there's an app for everything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, um, and there probably is actually, it is an app on my phone um, that still comes up every once in a while, but um, mine are, they're about eight years old now. So I, yeah. uh, and, and I, I mean, I don't, I don't think, um, there's, I mean, there's some apps called meetups um, where you can sort of, um, you know, if you're into art, some somebody is hosting a art meetup. But I think that's more in the bigger cities. Uh, I know, like, you know, I'm coming from New York, you know, uh, I used meetup a lot, you know, and it's just someone's hosting a, uh, I, I love soccer. So, you know, I would go to soccer meetups and we would, you know, a bunch of strangers would come in and just, have a soccer pickup game. And it was just a great platform to use just to connect with people, mm -hmm. you know, based on what you like to do. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's, a, that's another um, platform people can use to connect with, you know, like-minded people um, mm -hmm. that share your, your interests. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then moving into our, our next slide, um, you know, of, in, in rural Oregon, again, um, there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know of or that isn't used here. 
And so sometimes we do tend to think, or, or maybe we're, you know, living with our grandparents or our mom or someone who just has absolutely no online presence. And you think, isn't that a good thing? Like, maybe I shouldn't have my information out there. So why, um, why might that not be a good thing, Edwin? Uh, I mean, you know, for one, you, they, they might think you're not tech savvy, you know, they might think, you know, you're living in the stone age and, you know, you're not, <laughs> you're, you're not you know, and, and people, you, I mean, employees want, want that. That's a need for a lot of companies, you know, people that can use uh, these, um, navigate through, through the, uh, the internet and be able to utilize these platforms. Um, and, and yeah, if you don't have a, a virtual presence, you know, that raises some red flags, you know, not for some companies, not, not all of them. I think it depends on the, the position too, right? If, if you're being hired into a company that needs you to run their Facebook page, uh, they want to know that you know how to use Facebook. Um, and the same way too, if, if I'm having you work around computers at all, um, you know, I might gauge if I'm looking online and don't find you at all, then maybe you don't know how to use computers. Um, so again, back to that thought of you, if you've submitted a job application, that's not, it's not just what's on paper. You know, it's now I know your name, now I know your, your area, and then I'm going to be able to look you up online and then I'm going to judge and I'm going to gauge and see if you're someone worth interviewing. So yeah, and, and, and oh, let me add, you know, to this and, you know, there are a lot of companies, you know, a lot of businesses out here in Douglas and, and, and in Coos who surprisingly have, you know, a presence, you know, mm -hmm virtually a big one is convey convey you know oh, they, this is great yeah their um social media is on point you know they they uh, share a lot and you know it's just these companies are starting to realize that you know they they need to be they, they need to have a virtual presence to compete you know and 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 the labor markets mm -hmm. and, and, and find, just just oh, for their knowledge what is convey uh, Convey, it's it's a um, a lumber um, okay. uh, industry. Um, you know, it's a sort of a they do forest products, okay. um, and it, it's great. You should yeah check it out. They they have these like really cool um, automated like machines that you know. Um, and and I didn't know you know living living in New York, you know, I didn't know about the lumber industry at all. And then but just coming here, you know, I thought a lot of the lumber industry um, jobs were, you know, very, um, uh, I guess, labor intensive. Chainsaws you know. and hard hats. Yeah, yeah, but it's, <laughs> it, it doesn't seem that way. It's it has automated, and you know, you see these huge robots, you know, stacking, you know, plywood on onto this, you know, conveyor belt. Or it, it's yeah, you should guys should check it out. It's it's really cool. You know what they put. We out might there. be able, and you had mentioned we might be able to do a virtual tour at some point this this spring. Some. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We do we do virtual tours, and um, you know, hopefully, you know, with you know things, hopefully things start to get less restrictive, and we can actually go into the business and you know, and in person and, and get that you know experience for you guys. Nice, nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, you know. Your virtual present, it's, it's, your, it's your brand, you know, you're, you're branding yourself, you know, it, it's what, it's who you are. Um, and whatever you put out um, in these social media platforms reflect upon, you know, who you are as a person, you know, and, and, and the thing is, you know, you have to sort of tell people, you know, who you really are, and it should be reflect in a positive way. Um, so social media helps employers get a glimpse of your world and you are in control of what you convey to them. And that's a powerful statement because it's true. You know, you, you have control. And I mean, it doesn't, it might seem like you, you don't, but you, you know, you control, um, your, your, your social media, mm -hmm. um, and profiles may also show creativity and well-rounded attitudes or that you have a great co communication skills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those, those skills are important, you know, and, and sort of um, uh, showcasing what you can bring to a company, you know, what you can bring to an employer. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely something we should, we should all practice, you know, we should all practice um, 
creating a, a positive presence um, in the, the social media world um, and, and utilizing this, this, this powerful tool because, you know, like I said before, you know, it's, it's just increasing, you know, as the years go by, you know, it's, it's going to get more and more um, uh, apparent that we use social media in, in our daily lives and in our professional lives as well. Mm-hmm. So moving on into this one, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it is conveying your personal brand. And so we do want to touch in on what companies are not wanting to see on your social media. And so... Um, did you, I can go through this one, Edwin. Oh, yeah, sure. uh, so yeah, so we don't want, you know, if I'm, I'm browsing through Facebook and browsing through Instagram, or you come up on someone that I should know, or someone that my page should follow, and then I see a photo of you that's provocative or in an inappropriate situation, such as, you know, underage drinking, um, having firearms, making threats, um, just being inappropriate. Um, I'm going to turn away. You know, I'm going to say maybe that's not who I can trust being part of my team. I also am looking for comments or, um, you know, the captions that are bad mouthing previous employers or even your peers. So we want to make sure that you're not, you know, a, a terrible person and you're not going to turn around and say stuff behind people's backs or to their face. You know, we're, we're gauging your, your personal presence as a face to face off of what we're seeing online. And that's what's really important to understand. So we're also looking um, to not see bigoted comments that are related to your race, gender, or religion, right? That's something that's in like every employee contract that you'll find is that we are not judging, we are not um, discriminating based off of race, gender, or religion. And so we don't wanna hire someone in who is going to be using their social media to do that. Um, we are also looking um, for proof that you're not lying about your qualifications. So if you come in and submit a piece of paper that says you have all of this training, and then I go online and see, it. well, clearly you don't work for that company or you don't have them in your history. Um, you know, we can we can gauge that just off of what you've you've told us through your profile. Um, also, just um, some basic knowledge is when you're working and you're on the clock, you shouldn't be posting on your personal social media accounts. So if you are on Twitter or you're on Facebook and you're constantly, you know, commenting, liking, sharing things, and it's clearly during the work hours then I'm gonna be hesitant on hiring someone because obviously you don't have some time management skills there and mm -hmm. the tasks. Um, poor grammar and spelling errors. Now that's something maybe you turned in a resume and it's perfect because you were able to submit it to your advisor, you were able to submit it to me, we were able, you know, even your mom looked over it again and you, you turned it in great, but then we go online and it sees that, you know, we've got all of these typos and all these spelling errors. Um, and just the, the type of grammar that you're using overall is um, really you know, showing that you're maybe not as educated as you had said. Um, and maybe I'm not gonna be able to task you with a writing assignment right off the bat. Um, so those are some things that we look for. Um, also complaining about jobs and complaining about employers. If you're at a job that you hate and you are being very verbal about that and then you go in and apply for another job, well, now you're, you're bad mouthing your company, you know, and that's, that's something that would not fit into the culture that we're trying to, to achieve as an employment. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it will definitely affect you, you know, with your future uh, being employed in the future, mm -hmm. it, it'll come back to haunt you, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you, you post uh, from now or in the past, you know, it, it will come back to haunt you. So you definitely be mindful of like you said, you know, the things you put out there and, you know, because, you know, it's, they'll, they'll find it, you know, they'll find it. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of scary how they, they know how to navigate and, and find, find you, but somehow they, they can. Um, and also, you know, studies have shown that, you know, social media usage does affect pr productivity in the workplace and mm -hmm. it, it does uh, pr productivity declines, you know, because, you know, people are on social media during, you know, their um, work day and, you know, it's, it's not something that sh should be done um, at during you know, your work hours. 
So yeah, when we go into looking at auditing, then maybe you've already had a huge social media presence. Um, I know I just recently went through and audited my Facebook again. Um, I've been on Facebook actually since it opened in 2004. Um, I was a freshman in college. And at that time, Facebook was only allowed for .edu addresses. Um, and it was based, you're laughing at me, Edwin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, but we had to be enrolled in a college in order to have a Facebook account. And so it really was um, really, really tight niched. Huh. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So it started off as just a, a higher education um, social media uh, platform. But, you know, being on social media for as long as I have, I definitely had some different pictures, different vibes that I didn't want going on. Um, and so you starting as a teenager, maybe have more control over going forward. Um, but maybe you have to look backwards and say, oh, wow, I really was liking all these YouTube videos and these TikToks that maybe aren't what I want an employer to see. And um, so you can go back through and you can audit your personal brand. Um, brands, again, our, our social media presence is creating a lasting impression. And what was um, posed to me at a conference I went to once was thinking about it as a legacy. Like if you were to um, go to completely offline and move out of the country, or, or unfortunately, if you were to pass away, uh, what would your legacy be that you were leaving behind you? And what would people know about you if they were to only look at your Instagram account, if they were to only know you by your Facebook page? Um, and so that's what you want to do when you're looking back at, at auditing your brand uh, is just saying, is this something that I want to be known for? And is this something that was, oh, it was just funny at the time and I don't need to really have it on there anymore. You know, you can delete them. Um, however, because it is posted online, there's always kind of a lasting timestamp um, there's always some behind the scenes work that some computer geniuses can go in and find. And so um, Edwin had brought up the thought too, and he brought up some companies here that you can actually employ to help audit your accounts. Um, and did you, did you look into more about what reputation defender and integrity defender are, Edwin? Well, yeah, they're sort of just uh, companies that provide services to go in and, and sort of um, delete or, or, you know, delete some of the, the bad press that you have in, in the virtual world. Um, you know, you can easily just, like you said, just Google someone's name and something will come up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, they'll come and, you know, they'll sort, sort of, you know, navigate the, the web, the web and, and find things that, you know, probably you, didn't realize you you posted or you know something so they they just help you with with sort of um uh i guess deleting the the bad press you know you have on on you know these platforms that's cool yeah and i know it's another way to do it too is maybe to have your advisor or have you know an adult mentor that you have um go in from an account that you're not friended with or that you know is just a public account and just googling again or i, I always say Googling to me is like another word for search. It's kind of made the same word. Um, but you're getting on Facebook and just typing your name in and seeing what pops up. And maybe you were, you know, at, you did a play once, right? I was a tree at, in the Wizard of Oz. That's my oh. name there. That was a great tree. But there was maybe some unflattering pictures of me throwing apples at people. And I don't want to be tagged in that. And I wouldn't know that they were there unless I went in from an outside account and seen them. And, you know, because I hadn't accepted them as being on my timeline. So just, you know, involving people, again, that's where our, our mentors and our advisors come into play. That's why we're talking about all this early before we get out of high school um, and really just knowing that it's it's in your control and it's something that's out there. Yeah. Um, employers are gonna use to, to find out more about you. And so you wanna be cautious, but you also wanna be consistent in what you're portraying. So this, um, yeah, that was a, the picture that popped up there. That was an example that Career Builder gave us um, right, so that they were driving, trying to take a selfie, which is entirely illegal, right? And so you don't want to put that stuff out there that you're driving down the road trying to take a selfie, um, especially if I'm going to go in and try to try to want to hire you. Then I'm like, oh, well, they can't follow the law either. So that's not good. Yeah. Um, so just as we're, I know we're, we're coming to the end of our time here. Um, and no, I, I think we got another slide, but yeah. if you guys have some questions or some topics you'd like us to address, um, go ahead and start typing those into the chat. Um, so we can catch you on our follow-up one. So informational interviews. Yes, this is the last one. And this is something that we can definitely help you with here at Recruit Hippo. Um, I've had a couple of really successful ones that um, took about maybe 45 minutes and we did them virtually. 
Um, but we were able to set up informational interviews with some local businesses um, or some local educators. Um, I had one that was a student who's a grad student over at the Charleston um, OAMB, Oregon Institute, yes, Oregon Institute of Marine Biology, <laughs> which is a branch of the University of Oregon. It's a grad school for marine science. So I had a great uh, conversation with her and a junior over at Marshfield. Um, just about what it took to get into her education path and then into her career path, where she wants to go. Um, so that was a really fun, fun way for us to do some career exploration virtually. Um, informational interviews are set meetings that, to discuss what current professionals experience at their jobs. And so what they are intending to do is help you see, again, behind the job description, what does it actually look like in day-to-day -day life? Um, again, learning what the career path is and if it's going to be a good fit for you. Um, it can also help you narrow down broad career fields, right? So you know you love marine science. Well, how many jobs are inside of that, right? Tons. There's tons of things you could do um, in the marine science fields. So um, what informational interviews can do is just partner you, again, with a local person. Um, and we, can, we don't have to be local. Like Edwin was saying, he's got ties over in New York. He's got some great um, followings that he has online that he, he talks to, and we could even arrange for some careers that maybe not won't be offered like right here in our backyard, but yeah. even if it's something you'd like to move into, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, and it's just, yeah, I, I do have, you know, connections in, in New York, you know, um, with sort of uh, the, the medical field and, and also summer camps, you know, if mm -hmm. you're interested in summer camps, um, I know a great one out in um, Hampshire. I, I, it, it's, it's definitely that, that definitely was an experience and but you know you just you never know you know that's why these networking you know networking is is crucial you know to to your success as a professional mm -hmm. and um, it, it definitely will benefit you you know to have those connections throughout your life mm -hmm. yeah and, and that last point there um too was just that um, informational interviews can help you actually as a practice interview too, because mm -hmm. then you've got someone who's in a career field you're interested in, and you have the opportunity to have a discussion and say, hey, what was the toughest interview question you were asked? Or how would you recommend I answer this question, right? So I know my, my toughest interview question was um, totally blindsided me because I was, I was used to under talking myself and being the supportive team member, and I was trying to interview for a managing position. And he said, you're very humble, Annabelle. What can you do better than any of our other applicants? And I was just like silent, <laughs> I had no idea. And thankfully he was letting me pause and he continued to say, no, I know you're really good at something. What are you better at than anyone else? And I was able to turn that around into customer service. And I'm really great at gauging people and, and figuring out what the issue is and, and solving that issue for them. And so he gave me gold stars and, and I passed. But <laughs> it's interesting because these, these um, professionals that are out there, your teachers, your advisors, again, the local business owners, they've been through this, they've been through interviews. And that's the idea behind networking really is to, to reach out, to branch out, to find other humans that are in some careers that you want to be a part of, and then just have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that you want to get set up, again, we just need um, kind of some insight into what career fields you're interested in. Um, we do have social media accounts that you can follow. You'll see a lot of our business partners on there um, too. We are again under South Coast Business, which is a Coos Curry and Douglas County organization. Um, so we can connect you with our local, our state, um, some national partners that we've, we've recently come into. Um, and we can set up some different career talks for you. So we can use our connections to help you as well. Definitely. And, and you know, I, I want, would like to share this um, for uh, those of you who um, are interested to know more about social networking. There's a really, uh, really informational documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. And it sort of uh, gives you um, a, an insight of, you know, sort of the negative aspects of social networking and, and how you know, um, that, so that that might give you more of an, inf you know, more information about, you know, social networking and, you know, certain things that you, you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, it's a great, um, it's, it's on Netflix, if you guys have Netflix, and it's a great documentary, really. Uh, I think uh, it, it, re it recently came out um, a few months ago. So that's something you guys should check out. 
And um, thank you guys for um, allowing me to uh, present. And hopefully, you know, I can see you guys, you know, in the new future with more workshops out there. Awesome. Thank you, Edwin.